Corgis have been taking over the internet for years. I myself am a proud Corgi owner and fan, and today I want to share some fun facts and history about these fluffy bundles of joy. Corgis are famous for their Lilliputian legs and cheeky butts, but did you know that in times of yore, packs of corgis would journey miles all on their own without needing any humans to guide them? Before we get into that, let's start with some corgi facts. The word corgi is generally accepted to be derived from the Welsh words for dwarf and dog, cur and gi respectively. Have you ever heard of a corgi mix? Well, when a corgi is bred with another breed of dog, the result is a corgi version of the other breed. How cool is that? Corgis may look fluffy and cute, but they were actually bred as working dogs, used to herd cattle and other livestock. Their short legs were an advantage in herding because they could nip at the heels of livestock without getting kicked. Back in the day, their tails were cropped to prevent livestock from stepping on and breaking them. Fortunately, tail docking is less popular now, so we can appreciate the beauty of their magnificent tails. But these corgi facts aren't what I want to talk about today. Instead, as I alluded to earlier, I want to talk about a corgi fact which isn't even on Wikipedia. So picture this. Corgis, roaming the countryside without a single person in sight. But why? Well, as I mentioned before, corgis are herding dogs and Britain has a long history of drovers. Up until steam railways were developed in the Victorian age, drovers would drive cavalcades of livestock across remote mountain trails to sell further east. Even today, tourists visiting Britain can find the remnants of these trails, known as drove roads or green lanes. Once the drovers made it to market, they would unleash their hounds to return home on their own while they celebrated at the local inn. Villages along the green lanes would see hordes of corgis heralding the return of the drovers. The corgis were able to navigate the countryside by themselves and find their way back home over many miles, relying on their sense of smell and memory. My friend also told me that the drovers would pay inns in advance for the corgis to rest and recharge on the way back. I couldn't find much evidence to back this up, but I like to think it's true and imagine corgis taking naps at inns on their way home, and maybe even enjoying a pint of ale and a game of darts with the locals. This was my first time animating anything, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.